He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Today we're going to look at a problem regarding empirical and molecular formulas. Now the question reads, a hydrocarbon contains 10.5 grams of carbon per gram of hydrogen. So for every gram of hydrogen, we have 10.5 grams of carbon. And if one liter of its vapor at 127 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere has a mass of 2.8 grams, what is the molecular formula? So if you're not sure where to start, I do have a tutorial on elemental analysis that goes over empirical and molecular formulas. And I also have a tutorial on ideal gases, which may be of use. So when you're ready, give this a try. So to start, let's just go ahead and list out the data that we have. We do have a pressure, and that is one atmosphere. We do have a volume, and that is one liter. And we do have a temperature. And remember, whenever we do calculations with temperature, we do need that to be in Kelvin. So we do take our 127 degrees Celsius, and we just add 273 to that to get 400 Kelvin. And so that is all the data we have. And uh, we know that we're dealing with a vapor. And so we can treat this as an ideal gas. And let's recall the ideal gas law, which is PV equals NRT. So we do have most of that data right now. The only thing that we do not have is N, moles. So let's go ahead and, and, and rearrange this equation to solve for N. So we get N equals PV over RT. And now we can just plug in what we know. So for pressure, let's put in our one atmosphere. For volume, we put in our one liters. And then for the uh, gas constant R, we put in 0.082 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And then the temperature in Kelvin, 400 K. And so we see that everything is going to cancel out nicely, uh, except for moles. And so we will get an answer in moles, which is convenient because we are solving for moles. So we do the arithmetic and we get 0.0. 304 moles. So that is the number of moles of the unknown hydrocarbon that we have. Now we do have some other information here. We know that this sample also has a mass of 2.8 grams. So we have a mass and we have a number of moles. And so from that, we can get more information. We can get the molar mass because the molar mass is simply grams per mole. So we take the grams value and we divide by the moles value and we get 92.1 grams per mole. So that is the molar mass of this unknown hydrocarbon. Now let's take this other information. We have a ratio. We know that we have 10.5 grams of carbon for every gram of hydrogen. So let's we're going to change this into moles because, again, we do want to know the empirical formula. We want to know the ratio of carbon atoms to hydrogen atoms in the molecule. So let's take 10.5 grams of carbon, and let's multiply by one mole carbon over 12 grams of carbon. That's the molar mass of carbon. And so we're going to convert that into 0.875 moles of carbon. And then let's take our one gram of hydrogen because we know that we have 10.5 grams carbon for every one gram of hydrogen. And let's multiply by one mole hydrogen over one gram of hydrogen because we know that hydrogen has a mass of one. And so we're going to treat that as one mole of hydrogen. So because we have this many moles of carbon for every mole of hydrogen, we know that the ratio of carbon atoms to hydrogen atoms in this sample is 0.875 to 1, which is a 7 to 8 ratio if we change that to, be, uh, in, to have integer values. Um, so we know, therefore, that the empirical formula is C7H8. Right? We know that for every 7 carbon atoms, there are 8 hydrogen atoms. And as it happens, this empirical formula unit, C7H8, does have a molecular mass of 92.1. Therefore, we know that the empirical formula is also the molecular formula in this case. And so C7H8 will be our answer. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.